Hey guys, Corey from AquariumCoop.com. Today, I'm doing the store tour like you've never seen before. It's gonna be super long, super in-depth. And if you're brand new to the channel, it might be a little boring. If you've been around for a long time, you'll be like, dang, I've never seen all that or heard all that. So let's strap in, let's start looking at some fish and telling some stories. All right, first up, we've got some platinum angels. That's what these guys are right here. I can get to focus in on them. Come on, focus in, there we go. And then we've got a Pistogramma Borelli Opal. Now these are an amazing fish that can go cooler water. Some can breed them outside, even in California. So a little Apisto can go unheated tanks. That's what makes them super special. And then we've got some bamboo shrimp hiding out up there. Well, we're gonna take a look, we're gonna talk about, you know, like I built this tank, or we built this store, right? So we built all these racks, a lot of people want more in-depth how to do it. Now, we're gonna overlay some images, but when you take the tanks out, they're basically like these little pixie sticks. So the way it's built is each vertical every two feet, right? You build those in, and there wouldn't be anything for the tanks to stand on. So you're just building, this is built out of two by fours. Yes, we sanded and stained two by fours to get this look. You know, we had no money when we were building the store. Not no money, but very little money. We had to stretch it as far as absolutely possible. So yes, we've got a bunch of those, you can see. And, uh, you know, you're gonna see a picture of them, what it looked like raw before we painted the wall and we put tanks in and all that kind of stuff. So the next step is to start installing what we call these cleats, right? And so you do that every level, you're gonna have a tank. Now, why did we install these cleats instead of typically you see like a, a two by four going across? One, that looks a little, you know, a little more homemade kind of look. This looks a little bit more polished. Two, we've got more room with a net, right? So we can, we can get this top tank lower so more people can see into the bottom. And we got this tank right where we want it. And then the bottom tank, you know, we could have put that there, but we use it for substrate. So you have to clamp both of these. You have to make these pieces first. They're about 14 inches, right? So we would clamp them. You make them, you clamp them into place. You clamp these ones into place. And then, and then you would have to uh, put the tank on it and we'd use something called a bullseye level. And so it would, we'd have to keep making adjustments, maybe bump this up a little bit bring that corner back down a little bit. When that bullseye level got just right, then you would you would put in a nail here, a nail here, a nail here, and a nail here. And between all of that, that would hold it. Then you could take the tank off and you'd undo everything, right? You get all the clamps out of the way. Then you could drill. You had to drill a hole all the way through all of these, right? Then we'd have to put a bolt through it, tighten that down and do that on all four. Now, even those bolts, we spent building this rack in this store. So we drill a hole through here, and we spent seven or no eight hundred dollars on hardware. So that was washers, couple washers, lock nut, uh, nut there, couple washers, and the bolt, all galvanized so that it wouldn't rust over time. Right? We're now six years into this store, and there's no rust still. Um, so yeah, that in itself, no one ever thinks when they're building a store like, oh yeah, I'm gonna spend $800 just on this. You think about the wood, and you're like, yeah, there's some money, like 100 bucks, and yeah, it turns out it's way more. So now we've got the layout, and you've got the extra space. It's a talking point. You only have to support glass aquariums on their corners. Now I've seen this style done up to 125 gallon tanks. So. Now you know, a lot of times we get asked. And so that's how we built this rack, you know, all the way down. This is the first thing we built in the store. If we go over here, this never existed like this. We'll paint us some old pictures where it's like, oh geez, this looked terrible. We had to cut all of this out, put in all the hardwoods and all that kind of stuff. And that took, you know, a week or two on its own. Everything was very slow because it was just me and, uh, a buddy and mentor named at Andy basically and he he's the one that owned all this wood and he basically loaned it to me loaned me the labor and a lot of this wood we had to buy a lot of stuff too but anything he already owned he would loan me and that was like a lot of this maple all this maple 
is sustainably harvested. So that means when we buy it, someone else replants it, that type of thing. Another cool thing about the store is that we reused absolutely everything. So if we come in here by Jimmy, this piece of metal right here, this is made out of a bed frame. So old bed frame, still perfectly good metal, we weld onto this to hold the freezer. Now, you might be going, I don't know, that doesn't necessarily look like a bed frame. Okay, this piece will look like a bed frame. This is literally where like the rollers or the rubber end would be on the bed frame. Now you can really see like, oh my God, it actually is a bed frame. And we have a CO2 tank there strapped to the wall, but when you paint it and you know what you're, you know, you got someone that's know what they're doing with the welding, not so bad. Again, oh my gosh, is that more bed frame? Yes, it is basically free, uh, free metal. Now, this is kind of a weird terrarium setup that we got chilling right here that someone made for us. It's cool, you know. But at one time, we swapped tanks through here. So if we move the easy green products out of the way, we then have this, which slides out so that we can put different sized tanks and so it could never like be someone pushes it off. Like we had to build that in. So right now we use it to hold everything here so that someone doesn't push this off. So it's a lot of that stuff of ingenuity, saving money where you can, and not just buying everything brand new. You'd go broke buying metal. Like this, the metal for this was its own nightmare. We had to buy it over the span of like a week because there was a metal shortage when we were buying it. It was a nightmare. So, you know, this rack right here was actually in my old fish room. I know I've got pictures of that. You know, it had, we were testing, I was breeding fish and doing that kind of stuff when I was, you know, working, you know, in my own fish room, three fish rooms ago, that still came here along with, I bought this from another fish room on the cheap. <clears throat> oh yeah, and then this rack too, over here, same fish room, we painted it. You know, we, we covered it in Rust-Oleum, like hardcore paint, but that's what this stand was. It was a dual 75 stand. We use it as a 75 up top, which that's what all these guys are chilling in at the moment. Got a lot of uh, neon tetras in this planet tank. One of our favorites. But then we had to modify the bottom. Now, why don't we just put a 75 down on the bottom? Well, let me show you. The drainage pipe that goes all the way to the back of the store that's down there and really hard to see has to go behind this tank. And so we had to cut and modify this whole stand to make it work. So that's why it was a 55 below the 75. But again, we bought this pennies on the dollar. Someone else already built it. We just had to modify it. Up front, kind of the same thing. And I think we've got some old pictures of what the front used to look like. The front used to be right here. We had a lot of plants. And then we had, I don't think it was this rack. It was entirely, it was that rack. That rack right there. So we've got a 55 and all that kind of stuff. That used to be right here. And it was very sparse with the, a giant aquarium right there, a 340 gallon tank. I spent $2,000 on the tank that sat there. We'll bring up a picture. And there's a very tragic story about that and how that tank nearly put us out of business, besides costing us the $2,000. Now, if you want to see that story and all that kind of carnage and that craziness, check out, we're going to link right now and at the end and probably in the pinned comment of that whole video will be on Jimmy's channel, Swiski, and you guys can hear all about that. That's its own tale and saga. Um, but then we built on this, we bolted them together, as you can see here, bolt them in the corner, boom, and we built this shelving, and we've got rocks and all that, and the metal costs a lot. You'll see, these are things that, that just work, like it has to be done, and you go, you can't do that, and then I'll tell you like, well, it's been that way for six years. So look at this tank, right? Now during welding and that kind of stuff, something happened where it got a little bit off, a little bit. So you can see here, we leveled it with some wood, right, right there, and then we made up the gap with some quarters. That's literally quarters right there, and it's been that way for six years, and it's just working. You know, it's one of those things, you can't do that. It's like, well, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, and quarters fit right there, and they're holding just fine. So down over here, this metal baking rack was in the shop as a baking rack when we took it over. This whole building used to be, um, a maid service, right? So we used that rack going, oh yeah, we could hang like our fish bags and stuff. We knew that was gonna work. 
And then this right here, these these poles were found in a parking lot, an abandoned parking abandoned parking lot, and we just cut them and used them, right? So more scrap reused because something reused is just as good. Six years in business, still working. Now this whole area was never to exist. This L shape never was to exist. We built this counter right over here, right? The, the command station as we called it. And from here, the whole goal was as a, you know, a entrepreneur and a guy that had to live here, from this spot I could look at the fish tanks and I could see all the way down and I could address you with a customer and come over there and help you and I could greet you right when you came through the door. So this was dead center, right in the middle of the store. How can I help you? Bring you back to the center to help you check out. And we were gonna build the flow through here so you could go all the way around. What we learned, this counter is exactly 40 inches. This is not ADA compliant. It has to be 36 inches. Even though we've had many, many people in wheelchairs and that type of thing, they much prefer this counter than this counter. But I guarantee you, this counter is exactly 36 inches because it had to be before we could ever open. And so then we had this weird counter we had to put in, so we put in this corner piece and then this long piece to keep people out of here. Once we had to like build it, we were like, well, it's gonna look weird if you just leave it right here as kind of an open thing. So we enclosed it. This is just some old fabric, you know, and it, it kind of works. This is a burl right here. Big old burl on top with little knickknacks that we've gotten from customers over the years. This this little catfish is said to ward off earthquakes. Pretty appropriate for a fish store, right? So there's that. Again, what do you see down here? More baking rack that we've reused. More baking rack. Like it's crazy. More of that pole. One long like 12 foot pole basically did all of the all of the racking. Again, down low more bed frames in rubber bands, but that's more bed frame right there. So it's kind of insane the way we had to shoestring this place together. I think a lot of people see us on YouTube and just go, yeah, it must be real nice to be successful and they don't realize like <laughs> we built this thing on the shoestring budget and put in a billion hours and put in a bunch of work to make it work, you know? Uh, and then we did the thing. So we, we scrimp and we save everywhere we possibly can, right? And then we go, well, we still need to look like we're a million bucks, even though we, we have less than $100,000. So then we put like the crown molding. And I remember buying that molding and that was like the last of my money. Like we could only get barely just enough. So much so that we ended up buying this at the, the RE store, the reuse store, because I couldn't afford to buy the full price molding. So this cabinet we built out of, I remember buying these sheets super cheap because they were damaged, the, the old, uh, pegboard and then we built this thing as cheaply as we could and that was the first display we had in the store that's it right we had some food and then like months later probably six months later I was able to afford enough product and uh, found these cabinets on Craigslist I remember I paid I think it was two hundred dollars for the pair of cabinets we loaded them up in a van and we got them here and they've been here ever since and all we did was we took the backs off and we put pegboard in there. That was the only modification we made. So there's pegboard and all the shelves and everything would have already been there. And so like it's kind of just a crazy thing where you know, you're like, oh, you gotta buy all this stuff. You do, but we buy it used and we repurpose it and we make it work for us. You know, now if we had to, we could afford it, but we still would be like, why? Why not just repurpose stuff? It's just easier and better. These are really nice solid wood for way too cheap. You know, if you buy it, brand new it's gonna cost you a lot of money if you build it it's gonna take a long time while we're back here we'll chime in on Murphy now those of you who have been around a long time you know that Murphy is the store mascot before Murphy was Hank my true love and you'll hear about that on Jimmy's channel because I'm gonna tell that story but you know broke my heart but now we've got Murphy and who doesn't love that face you know but Hank is still my first love you know, now my second love, Murphy, don't, don't get me wrong. You know, we spent many, many, many mornings together. Every day, I'd walk in, turn the lights on, he'd see me, he'll follow me, because he knows I usually get him clams. You've been eating pretty good today, bud. I can see that. Do you still want a few clams? Should we show him behind the scenes first? All right, let's show him behind the scenes. 
So let me come back here. We had to put in our own hot water heater, and I know it's dark, I get it. Um, and then we had to put in an expansion tank, and we had to put in, this is a temperature control valve, so we can control the temperature always coming out of this. And then we run water everywhere, and we built that thing to hold a giant air pump, which is off right now, so you guys can hear what I'm saying. Not that it's super loud, but the bubbles in the tank are loud. You know, so we're gonna grab, you know, here's kind of a thing you end up making, like, what's in this freezer? There's blood worms and all that kind of stuff, so people know they don't have to go to our other warehouse. But if I just grab a few clams out of here, let me do that. We'll feed Murphy. All right. You ready, Murph? You ready? Yeah, you are. You know the drill. Come on over, bud. I know. You're hungry. I get it. Here you go. This will literally never get old to me. I love feeding them every day. You know, I just, you don't get tired of watching it. Just so much power. He's growing. And I'm always lucky. I, you know, this is one of the things I think about. I think I'm so lucky to have a 360 gallon tank, you know, and have an animal like this in my care that it's my job to make sure I take care of them, feed them, keep them healthy. And for many years, you know, yeah, I had my wife, but there's many hours where I'm just here at the store. And at the beginning, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't always packed or anything. So it was me and me and Hank, you know. And now in late nights, it's me and Murphy because we film. You know, but lovable character, big part of my life, the fish. You know, obviously people are like you must love fish. No, I, I really do love fish. Big part of my life, you know. This was some of the first money I ever spent right here. This Logitech camera. It gets you the view, it gets you this view. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can look in and get that view from our website. And I still do it. And I used it, you know, I use it all the time to be like, is the power out? Make sure my fish is doing okay? All those types of things, you know? So I still use it daily. This tank right here, you're like, wow, look, that's a 90 gallon rimless. We paid nothing for it. How do you get everything for free? Well, I say I paid nothing. We worked really hard. I worked an entire weekend at the Aquatic Experience before it was called the Aquatic Experience. It was the Family Pet Expo. And I worked the uh, touch tank for Hikari the entire weekend. So I worked four solid days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, with tear down and everything. And they knew I was gonna try and open a store. So they said, well, it makes sense for you to get this tank. It'll be a nice display in your store and go ahead and take it. And I did. And we, we ferried it home and it sat in storage for over a year until we got to here. And now it's been several different tanks. It's been goldfish, it's been a breeding tank, it's been discus, wild discus. You guys have seen that with mollies. Now it's Robert's tank to play with, a lot of dragonstone in the back and just some plants. You know, we've got a tiger lotus down low. We've got pogo stem and erectus going on on both sides. When it gets a little more light, it turns pink. We've got a little Anubius nana petite back there. And we've got some, you know, algae and that kind of stuff. But just good times. What do we got here that's interesting? Right now we're using, so I turned off half the air. And this is moving a little bit too slow, as you can see. But even under very low air, these things will tumble. In my opinion, that's very low air. You know, with a little bit more air, you know, that's moving a little bit more there. You can see that's getting a good tumble going. And obviously we move them faster than that typically. Like this would be a normal, normal uh, churn on there. So another big part when we could finally afford it, I think it was in year two. I was quarantining all the fish at home at the beginning and then we were able to build this out. Well actually this went through two iterations. So I think in year one we built it out with tanks where I had to, I couldn't auto water change. I had to manually change them all. And then I think we drilled them all. And then after that, because it was kind of a hodgepodge of tanks, you probably see that in the first videos. Then we had this custom made, this system with racks from Home Depot plus this cost, I think five or $6,000 total. That was wholesale, right? So, but now, you know, we've, we've put so many fish through here. It's so amazing to me. You know, like right now we have some Black Knight Rams. That's pretty cool, I think. 
you know. These, these tanks have seen so many fish over the years, so many cool fish, so many rare fish, you know, they've just, I don't know, super cool to me, but what do I know? Got some platinum angels right here. Yeah, super cool. Auto water change system. You learn a lot of things. You gotta put all that infrastructure in. It took us like a solid month. I remember, so I do remember, let me let me think here. I remember sitting on the floor. I re yeah, I remember sitting on the floor. Where was I? I was down here where this tank was. This tank wasn't set up yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this with you guys because it'll be a trip down memory lane for me too. I remember sitting on the floor with a couple of people just like this, and we were on try number three on the auto water change system, and we were trying drip emitters, we were trying all kinds of stuff, and you get leaks here and there, then you'd get a thing of like, oh, the bottom tanks are getting water too fast. The top tanks are barely getting any water. Oh, it's a train wreck down there. I remember when we finally got that working and then it was like six months later, I tried to auto feed brine shrimp. So I tried to pump brine shrimp through all the lines that changed the water and I clogged up all the little filters that it had. So I remember I had to go through and disconnect every single one and that took hours. And take out the little filter, put it back together and that was that was my life that day. Meanwhile, servicing the customers that came in and that kind of stuff, like there was just a lot to do. And uh, you know, you learn all kinds of stuff, like sitting down here, getting this weird look at the store. I can see that power strip there. So what you might not know is you're not allowed to use any extension cords in a commercial building. So all of these four foot power strips go directly to um, directly to, I guess, plugins. You can't use any extension cords. So that means we had to put in tons of power. We had to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to put in the power. And part of the problem is some of the power lines were going under this concrete. And underneath this right here, this carpet is concrete. There's no underlayment pad. And this is my favorite way to have the store because currently there's carpet so no one slips. It doesn't look too bad, doesn't look too stained. This is after six years of heavy, heavy foot traffic. Doesn't look terrible. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of gallons have hit the, hit the ground and it still does okay. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. This, in my opinion, a commercial grade carpet on, on cement is so good for a fish store. You know, it helps me a bunch. You know, we have all the lights on switches so you can just turn out all the lights for the day and you turn back around the store is ready to leave right and then you walk in five minutes because you're running late oh god gotta open the store you walk back here the light from this murphy'd be greeting you or hank at the time and you'd be like hey hank and you'd reach back here and boom let's go to work just like that is that easy stores back on you flip around and you start checking everything out, you know? And that was my life for for three years, honestly. Three years of my life, every day of the week. We were cl open every day. At the very beginning, we were closed Thursdays because we still had to build, you know? So we'd get one day, get in here, build as fast as we can, clean back up, and be open the next day. And that was the grind. Those were 14-hour days, easy building, you know? And now I want to show you probably the rarest fish in the store which everyone has no idea. And it happens to be these uh, pygmy multi-stripe loaches. I've gotten these twice ever, and usually someone will come in and buy them all once they figure out I have them, or at least the loach community knows. But those guys are full grown, and they school around, and they're super awesome. Like, look at that, they're kind of mid-water, they dart around, they're so personable. The only downfalls are $9.99, but look at that. Like, who doesn't love that look? That's probably the rarest fish we have in the store, and people will walk right by them. Something that LR Bretts fell in love with while he was here was these purple neon tetras. Now, I don't know if they're gonna come out purple on your screen, but they are kind of this like weird bluish purpley color. Maybe Jimmy can get the B-roll of these guys, but they're cool. I'd never seen them before. And then we got these cool baby, uh, 
I guess, koi angels that, can I zoom in, can I enhance? I'm having, focus on that, not that. There you go. They got a lot of striations. They're a koi angel crossed with like a, like a zebra. Pretty cool. Now these might be my favorite fish in the store right now that I want to set up a tank for, and that is the variatus platy. It's actually not a platy, but variatus. It's like a platy. They can go very cold water. I love the high fin variant of it. Very cool fish. You can get them at PetSmart, Petco. Not hard to get a hold of, and yet, out of all the fish, we have one of my absolute favorites in the store. And we've got, you know, we've got things that are cool too, like that leopard frog pleco right there. That guy is cool. And then we've got all these lucipinus or dwarf petrocolas. Swim around like little sharks. Got a few rams from Dean. Not bad guys, getting low. Hurry up, Dean. What else we, oh, this guy's cool. This red fin sternella pleco. Whatever, focus on them. You ever notice how stuff loves to be right behind? There you go. That guy's gonna get cool. What else we got? Paradise fish. This is kind of a. This will set the internet on fire right here. Wait, you have a a gold betta. So one, that's kind of a cool thing, right? If it ever focuses in on that, it's like blown out here. This gold betta, and then you have paradise fish in the same tank. How has this tank not exploded from the rage inferno of them fighting? Yeah, I don't know. They just seem to be doing great, you know. And when it's not broke, we don't fix it. Wait a second. We have butterfly goodies. I'm a library nerd. These are down low because they don't like to get hot. So I never even saw these were in the store. The butterfly goodie is Amica Splendens. Very good algae eater. It's a live bearer, a rare one. And you can see all the color. They actually get pretty pretty. They get about four inches, it's kind of big. But they do well in this uh, with the Daniel Chorpray. That's the orange fish in here. Because they're quick. Yeah, that's kind of a nice little tank right there. Not bad at all. Some locally bred. Uh, electric blue acaras. So in our store, if it has a blue tag, it means it's been locally bred. What else we got down here on the floor? Anything super cool? Green neons always look dope. Let me slide over here. Yeah. So you see them. If you look down on them, you get that green. If you look on them straight, you're like, aren't those just kind of like Cardinal Tetris? Yeah, you kind of get both those looks. What else we got? That is, okay, I, we have fish in here I didn't know about. I've never seen this fish before in my, ever, let alone in my own store. And I can't pronounce it, so we're gonna, Betta Denisoyinga? Let's see, are they worth looking at? Come here, guy. They're kind of like a nondescript kind of brown betta at the moment. That doesn't mean they don't look super cool later or they're just not in the right thing. Come here. You got kind of a spade tail, that's cool. I love the fact that since I've handed the store basically over to Robert, he'll order cool stuff I would have never ordered and I get to experience stuff and I like to be surprised just like anyone else. So I get to come in and hunt my own store for cool stuff. What do we got over here? Oh, Lukunji, that's my favorite variant. Do we actually have it? Pelvic Acromus Crebensis Teniatus Lukunji. I love these guys. Oh yeah, there they are. Come out, show off. I wonder, see that little, see that right there? That little build up? The, usually the female wants to build that up till it's almost half full so no one else can get in. I wonder if she's in there. Cause the females with pelvic acromis look cooler than the males. So I wonder if I can take a look. We're going in. Oh, yep, she was in there. <laughs> See if we can show off some of these colors here. Yeah. All right, I'll let you go back in your home. That's a fish, if I want to get breeding tanks back in the house, or not in the house, but in the studio, that's a fish I would play with again, for sure. What else we got hidden? I know I had something the other day where it's a fish I want to breed, so I have to set up tanks. We had some long fin, red bristle nose. Now they're small if we have any left. That's a fish that I remember being outbid like a year, year and a half ago at $450 for a pair and then I had to ship it from like Germany. 
Yeah, so that's why it's still on my like, oh, I gotta do this list. Where are you? You're a cool looking pleco. You are a leopard zebra pleco. But do we have any of the super red long fins left? Come on, moss balls. Hide me some. Nope, looks like we're out. I gotta tell, I gotta get tanks set up. I want those bad though. Yeah, what else do we have that's cool? The Leopoldi angelfish. These guys have a more of a snout to them, like a longer nose, different than the Scalari angels. We got anything else hidden in here that I don't know about? Because I realize you guys might not know. Kind of a cool different Battis, Battis Rubra. Come on, guy. Focus. Yeah, just some little Battis guys. Sold out of cherry shrimp, dang. Have you guys ever seen Daniel Ritz from Micron? Probably not, because they always hide. That's what those guys are though, and when they color up, they get super emerald green color. Really cool fish, crazy shy. I might do a tank with like 20,000 sometime, just so I can see four. Very cool fish. What else we got? What else? There's always stuff hidden, you know, and I so rarely get to shop fish stores anymore. It's kind of fun. Oh, we brought in, you guys will have seen this video probably, we brought in a ton of Amano shrimp. And they're cleaning that sponge. Look at that. So we take, like a lot of times, let's see, do I have one? Yeah, if we have a sponge like this, so with all this algae on it, right? We'll swap that in down here when we get a new batch of like 300 Amano shrimp so that they can work on it. So you can see, they're just going to town, and they're, they've made headway on it. But this is, you know, one way to keep them fed. And they will starve if you don't feed them. They're so hungry when you've got that many in a tank. It's kind of crazy. What do we got in here, now that I'm at eye level? We've got some normal baddest. I don't know if you can guys can even see that. They're so small and tiny. If you ever get a chance, a Pontiacate and Bovinianus, one of my favorite, that's what this plant is, they grow really fast. So you can get it to go from like something like this to this in like a week. And they'll flower and then they're gonna die back. And they make a lot of leaves. You can see the new leaves coming up out of that thing. Really love that plant. And in this tank, you can see some hidden fish. Like that is a dwarf anchor catfish next to the blue shrimp right there. Then down low, we've got some blue wood shrimp. So yeah, blue velvet and blue wood shrimp in the same tank. Madness, I know. What else can we go find? Let's find some trouble. I know there's more stuff. What do we got around the corner? Anything? Ooh, the orange hatchet fish. These are cool Danio. These are a cool uh, uh, Compenche molly. I've never, I've never spawned those yet. Then we've got some lipstick barbs that were bred by Dean. So if you look over here, blue tag, these lipstick barbs, and you'll see when you, we focus on them. Come here. The bright red lips, yep, lipstick barbs. They're pretty fun. Flat flyer pleco or the butterfly. You can see how flat that thing is. That's how it gets named. Then with the betta. So yes, all of our bettas live in the community tanks with a lot of other stuff. That's important for us. We like to show that. These guys I think are super cool and more people should buy them. And that is the Anana, uh, Nubius Nana Petite in these, I think we're calling them the bonsai pots or the, the bowls. They're 30 bucks, but they're like instant cool foreground. Shrimp love it, so. We're testing some Java Fern Needle Leaf on wood. That's a new, uh, new addition for us. All right. I'm. Oh wait, wait. I'd, I'd be, I'd be crazy not to show you these guys. Better macrostoma. Look at this guy. He says, "Who are you calling a guy?" Look at that. That's a gorgeous fish. Now we've got all the catapa leaves in there to help them kind of bring the pH down, add some tannins, make them feel safe. He's got a big old mouth on him. He's a mouth brooder, so he, the male, will hold all the eggs. The female doesn't. The female gets to hang out back there, doing its thing. But a pair like this, woo-wee, 224 
99. So locally bred King Tiger Plecos, those are from Dean. You can see them in the store, or you know, back by the heater there. Instead of seeing them in his fish room, now you see them in the store. So we're in the warehouse. What I'm always talking about is taking a lot of my time. Yes, all that is shipping supplies. We're redoing all the bins. We're getting everything ready to go. Making big strides in my opinion. And uh, you know, little cool touches I think like this. Like we've got the new aquarium co-op tape. I think that's super cool. So now you'll see your package from a mile away in the box of packages being delivered by your mailman. So just stuff like that I think is neat, you know. Got all the lights. I just want to show you guys some of the plants and that type of stuff. There's probably new products you guys haven't seen yet, but hey. Um, let's see, where can we show something kind of cool? We're going to go over here. Got more java ferns right down there. The lights are all off for the day. This is a plant you guys should be buying, but because I was sold out for so long, it never shows up on the top of the list. Mayaka, very cool stem plant. Super cool. Get some. What do we got over here? Anything super cool? Anything looking extra good? I like to show you the extra good looking things. Right here we're, uh, we're converting Vesuvius. So here's like some mostly converted Vesuvius. Here's Vesuvius not converted at all. And then here we got a tag. Came in 119, 19. Vesuvius converting, check in in a week, not in inventory. So again, we're trying to convert it for you, make sure it's good to go before we ship it out to you. Same thing right here. We've got some Pogo, Pogo stem and Salatus octopus, melting uh, and gross, check them in a week, not for sale, right? So these came in a little, a little haggard, if you will. If I grab one of these guys, see how some of the leaves are a little melty? This plant is a very fast growing plant. It will probably recover, but we don't want to send you that because you're going to think, you know, oh, it's going to die. Instead, we'll leave it in there and we'll move on. But you might say like, well, what does healthy stuff look like then? Well, let me grab some healthy stuff. Come right over here. I don't know what's newest. I'm just going to grab some. You can see it from the top here. Let me just grab one. Yeah. Something that would be healthy would be like this. You know, a nice healthy plant. And we've got plenty of it in stock. Just came in, what, a couple days ago? Yeah. We've got a green water bloom going on in this tank. So we've set up the UV sterilizer. Should be gone by tomorrow, hopefully. But you can see here, the water's a little bit murky. You might not have noticed with the lights being out, but with the lights on, you can tell. And uh, we've got UV sterilizers going over time. We've got like two or three of them in here at the moment running. All the water circulating through here. And check on pineapple. How you doing, pineapple? Albino red-eared slider turtle. Just hanging out. Ooh, look at all that turtle poop at the bottom. Gross. Gotta do a water change. It's not true. I mean, it is turtle poop, but it's not, it's not like a bad thing. Lots of hoodies and shirts. Yeah, this is the next racks to redo. A lot of lights. But this is, we're trying to get this up to speed so we can make it easier and faster to supply you guys. There's more tape, we bought lots of tape. So let me know what else you guys wanna see. If I'm missing stuff, let me know and I'll try to film it next time. Still got mag floats. I actually fell in love with these scrapers. These are my newfound love and Randy said the same thing. He's like, you know what? I love the scraper mechanism. I gotta admit, me too. You know, I didn't think I was gonna. But I thought it was a gimmick. We got them, we got like a couple of those free when we bought it. Turns out works awesome. So, all right, let's go look at one more room. We've got one more little warehouse. Did they change the packaging on this? I think they did. Wow, they changed the package on the CAF 25. Used to always be a white box. Like, where's the white box version? We don't have it, but the other one's got to be white box. It's always weird to me when they when I watch them change something. So yeah, it's right here. That's this one. But oh yeah, this is the old packaging they used to do right here. Huh? I, I prefer it because white packaging gets dirty, whereas this packaging, I think it might sell better. What do you guys think? Does that say a one-year warranty? <laughs> oh my god, a one-year warranty on a sponge filter? 
I don't know why I find that so hilarious. Like, either this thing's warrantied for like 20 years, or it's just garbage. Like, I... <laughs> That's like me putting a one-year warranty on this post-it note. Like, I don't know, it just seems so crazy. We're having, we're designing our own sponge filters. I need to do that same craziness. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know. That just seems so out of character. Like, you know, you don't see this right here. Like, here's AquaClear sponges, right? One-year warranty, like you just, I don't know. It's a product that doesn't seem like it needs to have a warranty, but hey. Maybe they sell twice as well. Who knows now? I gotta put that on the website. Hey guys, one year warranty. All right, let's go to the other warehouse. So here we are, the other warehouse. It's so quiet in here, but this is where a lot of work gets done. My wife works in here a lot to prepare Easy Green. We've got all the pumps. We've got the Vac Master. That's a thousand dollar machine that is, ha! Paid off well, it's working, does its job. But this is all the easy game we just picked up. There's 60 in each of these, so if we've got 60 here and 60 there, that's 120. And then you go like, oh, that's five tall. Or was it six tall? One, two, three, four, five, five tall and six wide. Crazy amount of easy green. It's like it's a bats, lots of back stock over here. A lot of uh, Hikari products. You know, this is the back back stock. So we have what we're shipping out immediately, and then we have what we're buying. Heavy on, heaters, that kind of stuff. A lot more sponge filters, excess fluval, you know, fluval lights. Kind of a giant row of fluval lights right here as well. These are all 36 inches. Fry food bottles. We're waiting on more fry food to come in so we can bottle more. Yeah, what do we got right here? Easy carbon. Boom. Blue bottle. That's what all these are. You know, and I sometimes I just like to look at it and I think it just looks. I guess beautiful or pretty and half of me is just like I own this like this is like you know I'm gonna have one of these like nerdy moments I guess but like when I originally launched easy green I was absolutely terrified that it would even like take off like who am I to try and compete against Seachem and I still carry some Seachem products and stuff like that but it was so daunting and I remember the first order I thought for sure it was gonna ruin me and no one like I was terrified that somehow I was going to kill everyone's fish or it wouldn't work or even though I had done the testing and all that kind of stuff. And like now we buy so much of it and it sells so well. It's, I guess, you know, like running the store was its own like, okay, that was cool and rewarding. And then launching products, each one that works that I launch is like that feeling again, you know, where it's like, I did it. I did it. I made a thing and people like it. You know, it's like the ultimate reward when people show me their planet tank and it's running on easy green and that kind of stuff. Ooh, more sponge filters, what we got in here. But yeah, it's, it's super rewarding. Lots of manzanita wood that needs to go up on the website. Ooh, yeah. I Someone, someone tell me how they do this. How do they even get this manzanita into these boxes? Because taking them out is insane. And we get it shipped in and it's like a billion of them. So I don't even know how they do it. You know crazy to me but just the hum of some lights and someone working in here you know it's kind of a it's a lonely thing but also very peaceful I find like sometimes I just like to be in here and just look around and just look at stuff and go yeah that worked out oh that was a bad bad idea you know you get surrounded by your bad ideas too you know I still think like this is gonna be one of the biggest products if you're a store the Sarah Onup tab, I absolutely love these and I've loved them for years and more and more people are loving them. So, you know, get them while you can. The Sarah Onup tab, so amazing. I really like working with products that like no one knows. Not that no one, but few people know and then making them more known. Like that's such an easy job of like, here's an awesome thing. And then other people go, hey, that's an awesome thing. So yeah, there's that's probably like 10,000 air control valves. <laughs> Kind of funny. What is this? Bug bites and bug bites bags. Yeah. Kind of a fun thing. But let me know what else you guys want to see. I love showing you guys. I love telling the story. You know, I've got Q and A's coming out. I just love sharing the experience. Like you guys helped me get here. You know, you guys got me to the point where I need this much Easy Green on hand. This right here for perspective, because we just I just had to stack this basically. This right here is 3,600 bottles of Easy Green. That's what that is. 
So, and that'll last us roughly two or three months. It all, it, it kind of depends, like, you know, during Christmas, maybe it goes a little faster, maybe the summer it goes a lot slower, you know, and then we've got all this other stuff, and I'm just so amazed. I'm so excited that I'm, like, as you guys buy this, it funds me to buy the next thing. So there's other things like um, large intake sponges that we had made in, in China that are just better than what we could get before. Yeah, large intake sponges, right back there. And then from that, we're doing the mediums. Those are gonna come in next, right? So it's like, each time you guys support me and, and buy and stuff, we'll build stuff and make you a better product. And it's a slow battle, you know? But yes, we want it faster, we wanna do it better, but we gotta do it right, and it's a learning process. Like, I haven't, I haven't built electronics before, but one day we will, and that'll be super cool, and maybe I'll have the perfect light, or at least what a light that I like at the right price. I don't know. I hope, I hope that is one day, you know, I hope one day I'm just showing you guys the new warehouse and then this, this giant pinata goldfish comes with us because you get tickled by it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you hadn't seen all this stuff before, hopefully it's cool. If you've seen it all, you probably wouldn't watch this point anyway, but there's lots of tours. Check out that video. I know it's going to be a good one on Jimmy's channel and, uh, all I can say is thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And, you know, at this point, we're at 260,000 subs. Let's see where we can take it. Can you imagine us at a million? I, I try to think about it sometimes, but what I thought it would be like at 250,000 is so different than what it is right now. Like, we're so, so much better in so many different ways that I can't even imagine what a million would be like. So, thank you guys, honestly. Having a great life. <laughs>